Hello, 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 and welcome to Floating Polly. Uh, my name is Dr. Heatsink, and we're going to be continuing on with our uh, little fan project here, Sakuya is a Yoi from Toho Project. So uh, I've been working on it for a few months now, and uh, what we did last time was that we worked on the cloth. Um, in this case, it was the uh, blue cloth that you see in the little uh, preview on the left, and we've got Substance Painter uh, in full screen. And uh, it was all just the uh, blue cloth. Um, we did some, basically some AO and uh, texture painting on the uh, blue cloth there. But we're going to move on to the frills this time. And frills are interesting, to say the least. Because, well, we're used to making ambient occlusion maps to get at uh, gaps between... Uh, pieces of the fabric, you know, these folds, right? But sometimes when the uh, when the cloth or the form of the mesh is not um, distinct enough, you might find that the ambient occlusion map is not uh, strong enough and it doesn't quite help you. Now, we could go over and go back into Marmoset, bake it three times, um, bake like a you bake it at different settings and then take all of those um, setting, like, you know, different exports at different settings and try to merge them together. But so that's a lot of work and it's a lot of waiting and perhaps it may actually just be easier and more uh, stylistically purposed or, you know, intended, so to speak, for us to actually just paint in our ambient occlusion since we've got Substance Painter. And of course we can do that. Now, this requires a little bit of setup uh, for us to uh, be able to engage that, but we'll go through that as well. Uh, I just want to uh, go and hide some extra uh, pieces on the mesh right now. We've got it down to the dress, but I want to just hide the um, neck ribbon thing. Uh, there we go. So, because I just want to focus on um, just these frills and we can load in the uh, headband as well, since it is also, um, well, the color white. We're just working on the uh, the same material uh, across uh, the whole mesh, basically. Um, so, and I, I imagine when you look at, uh, say, an anime figure that's got like these kinds of uh, really dense frills, really quite um, elaborate even, and must be uh, quite a challenge to either print or um, manufacture. Um, you've got to somehow get some shading between them. And obviously real life lighting is going to do a bit of work for you, but you still want some variance in the way that certain things occlude each other or even just to paint details that maybe ne don't necessarily show up in the actual uh, printed figure. So that's another thing that we'll be doing. Uh, we'll be uh, kind of painting between these uh, edges. In fairness, some of the AO map that we have may already accomplish that, and we'll have a look at it in substance. So, we're just going to isolate to the frills that we're working on. Okay, so basically we're going to be working on this. Alright, and if we just go to our ambient occlusion right this so this is the raw ambient occlusion that we got from marmoset when we baked it and you can see that it's quite uh light it's very light even between uh these frills here there's not that much going on and you don't really want there to be too much going on anyway right? um because ultimately it's an ambient occlusion map um the initial sort of mindset that you'll have is that if i if you throw light there you would expect it to be lit, right? So the ambient occlusion is only supposed to really serve um, a small amount of shading. But the opposite occurs when you ask the question, well, what if I don't want light there because I'm never going to put a light there? Yeah. So that's where you move from a realistic choice to a stylistic choice, you know? So when you, go, when you do throw light and it does happen to reach that point inside, right? So if we're looking at these sort of uh, 
sorry, uh, in between between yeah, in between these frills, right? You would not necessarily expect light to reach there. Even if you were pointing the light directly in into that sort of crevice there, it would actually be better for it not to be lit. Right? Does that make sense? So, in other words, it's not about realistically what would happen if we shone a light in there. It's about if light goes there, are we are we supposed to render light there or not? Are we supposed to um, have have it react to light or would it be better if it actually just stayed dark? And obviously you'll make the, this decision on a sort of case by case basis. Okay? So this is our sort of starting point. And what I want to do now by default, a ambient occlusion uh, map is not added as a channel. Um, so you want it to uh, be available to edit in this particular texture set. So it's just a case of adding it on. And it's very simple, it's already configured, uh, except for one thing. This ambient occlusion mixing mode is how your ambient occlusion map is going to uh, work with what's already in the uh, channel, in which case uh, this mesh map. So this base ambient occlusion, uh, we want to be able to control this more directly. And at the moment it's on multiply, which sometimes is all well and good, if you're just aiming to increase darks but if for whatever reason you were correcting something so you needed to remove darkness um you know remove ambient occlusion you would then need to change this from multiply to replace now i don't think we necessarily need to do any kind of um correction here it looks fine as far as I can see anyway in the view, um, I haven't got any weird uh, errors or strange dark spots. It's, as far as I'm aware, it looks relatively uh, safe to work with. So we can leave it at multiply. So that will mean that for every uh, ambient occlusion channel uh, map we're going to be like editing onto it, it's just going to multiply that with the current ambient occlusion map. Since we don't need to do any uh, post map correction or anything, yeah, that should be good enough. Now, to actually see what our edited uh, ambient occlusion looks like right now, it looks quite different from the uh, um, the def the uh, what do you call it default? I think that's ah yeah because we've just added this new layer. Uh, I think. Oh okay. I think it's because the instance over here. No. Oh no, it's, um, we'll just look on ambient occlusion. Right, so we've got some coming through on the material instance, which is on the uh, texture set here. And this texture set is called, uh, a great name called folder to instance. Uh, I think it's because that's the, when the instance is created, it may not necessarily take the name. So we'll just go over to, uh, find it and down to white base here ah there we are and yeah it wasn't quite named so we'll just uh, go ahead and name that oh look at that yeah we let's have a have some fun with the handwriting tool what should we call it we should call it something like uh well i guess you know it's just the white material so uh white uh instance or something like that i wonder what it will get okay cool so all right Fair enough. White instance or like it's actually um, the instance goes over here. So we'll just call it something like a white real instance. Oh, not that. Probably help if I had uh, Never mind. As you can tell, I probably have way too much fun with the handwriting tool. Um, but when it comes down to business, we really want to be using the keyboard to input our uh, names so that we don't spend five hours, you know, writing the same word over and over again. Anyway. 
But if we go back to the in like the uh the parent instance, I guess well the parent of the instance even. And we look at what it's giving us. Bit of an ambient occlusion. No uh, texture setting. There's no channel for the. Oh, yes. The channel for the ambient occlusion doesn't belong there because it's not on the instantiated layer as well. So we've got to add it here just so that we can see what's going on. So there we are. Ambient occlusion. Multiply is fine. And have a look again. Shouldn't be doing anything, but uh, have a quick look. Yeah, as far as this is concerned, it shouldn't be changing anything. Apparently there's no real ambient occlusion going on over there, but that's, that's fine. Let's check. Ah, yes, yes, I see. The ambient occlusion generator over here uh, has the um, AO part ticked. So this uh, ch this does actually change uh, things going on in AO. We can turn it off if we really wanted to. Um, is it worth turning it off? Well, let's just have a quick look. Possibly, um, but it might be worth keeping it on just to see. But as we can see, it's, it has changed the color of the uh, material a bit. Just look at this fill layer. Because it may very well be that we don't want it to affect uh, the AO like that. I'm going to disable that as well. Here, just check. That is the instance. No one ambient occlusion is on multiply right now. Uh, we go and change it to here and go to replace. I wonder what happens. Not a lot. Well, we see that there's gradients going that way, uh, which may be a result of this here. Yes, there we are. It may very well be that we want it, uh, but it's going to change the way that our uh, texture looks across, uh, well, the affected area, really. Over on blue, for instance. Yeah. Here. Over on this linear gradient, you can see that it is actually affecting the AO as well. So, this is ultimately up to your own discretion as to whether or not you want to affect the ambient occlusion map via these gradients and the other things um, that you've made. So if you've got ambient occlusion uh, generators and stuff, it may very well attempt to uh, change the AO map, but that might not be what you want. So I'm just going to go to back to multiply as well since we don't actually need to do any correction. But when we look on the ambient occlusion um, channel, this is what I was expecting to see uh, initially, um, was basically a blank map. And then when we go to the mesh map channel, you see the actual ambient occlusion for those, um, uh, those channels. However, the problem with this and um, this is why I want to be using replace really, even though I've talked about multiply a bit, is that I might want to do a bit more um, or maybe need, need to be able to see more than um, just what is essentially a blank canvas here, right? Because that's not very helpful. So what I would do here is that I've got this ambient occlusion area. I want to go to not blue base, we're doing the white side today. I want to get a fill layer. 
Right, so we see that. Just with the AO. And I want to fill it with um <laughs> I imagine autocorrect is also going on in there. So I wonder. Will it be? not quite. Yep, would have been way quicker just to do um just to do it with the uh keyboard. There you go. Okay, it's not quite in there. It should be or maybe it's called sometimes you, you forget what it's called, and in this case it's called ambient occlusion, not AO. Um let me make that bigger. So I know that this is linked to this. This uh range hmm? should have should be able to drag that. Right then, um, add bell. It's a new one. All oh, right then. Apparently, it wants me to do it this way instead. That's fine. Apparently, um, the way to do it uh, with you know filling this texture in is to just simply click on it and then type in the name and then find it that way. Um, a little strange but uh, it's fine now this white this instance here is already uh containing the base information for all of the other detail so color roughness etc etc and the edits that we want to do are specific to the texture sets so we have to have a fill layer outside of the uh instance so this one is called frill 2 and if we just add on our fill, should be a fill layer, yes. Probably just do it that way as well, but for uh, completeness, we might as well do it on the, the fill um, layer of that layer. Well, yeah, they're like almost like the part two of it or something. Anyway, and plug that in. All right, so now you can see we've got our ambient occlusion but it's visible in the channel right not just the mesh map so this is the mesh map this is the channel right so this has got whatever edits uh, have been done visible and you can actually uh, modify it via the little slider on the top uh, there as well but what we want to be doing is that we want to uh, start basically painting in if you know areas that need it but on top of that we also want to uh, paint in um, more things like color variants or um, roughness and things like that right so you know it's one of the great things about substance is just this sort of um, multi-dimensional or multi uh, texture editing so this will call our sort of like uh, base layer or something like yeah okay that's good to know Base layer. Wonder if it got that. No. <laughs> there you go. I keep saying I want to just um, do it via the uh, keyboard, but I'm having a little too much fun with that. All right. Anyways, uh, then I want to have another layer called AO edits or paint or something like that. Right. And this is going to have some fairly flat values. Those away. So I want areas that I'm painting more uh, essentially ambient occlusion in. I want to receive less light to uh, receive um, a dip in color. So, you know, a darker color. And then, of course, I wanted to receive. Uh, ambient occlusion and, and that to be a certain value and what I will use to sort of um, get in-betweens or you know certain softness or um, you know stages I guess of uh, darkness or roughness or whichever is that I'm going to use pen pressure and uh, 
Well, yeah, just pen pressure and a mask. There's nothing too complicated about that. So there we go, we add a black mask, so it basically gets rid of everything uh, visible there, and we add paint, much like before. And you'll see, when I go to the material view, that the, this area is not super defined. I mean, there's a bit of definition in there, but it's not massive. And you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be, uh, if it had come from um, Marvelous and was baked. Sadly, uh, because texture sets uh, are defined by their material and not by object, I can't hide any of these sort of um, like external parts that aren't necessarily uh, going to make sense to see right now. So unfortunately, I just have to paint past them. Uh, if you're determined, you can sort of do a exploded version of the model to paint on, uh, but if uh, at any point you're sort of done with that you have to then put the old model back in and import the old model and that can be very confusing to substance because if you uh, re-import a different model even though it's got the same UVs it might struggle a bit trying to work out where all the paint goes despite the fact that they're going in the same place in UV space, it might not be going the same place in 3D space. This can depend on, you know, things like uh, the brush stroke and uh, all sorts of uh, fun things like that. I want to turn this to like a really crazy color and that way I'll be able to see more clearly if it's actually working at the moment um, after it saves. I don't think it is. So, oh, because I'm painting on the wrong area. I'm on throw two. With this, I'd probably just hide the uh, areas that I'm not necessarily working on. As we can see, this AO is pretty uh, strong in the wrong places, it seems. Oops. Definitely be this area. Ah, yes, because I'm on the wrong side. So, yeah, there we are. Now we see that it is actually working over there. So we can turn that down over here. Something slightly more sensible. And a flow down and a opacity down. So we're aiming to be really, really quite uh, soft and, um, you know, quite. How should we say, like, like airbrushing, right? I mean, in some cases, it may very well be that the air, the model is airbrushed, maybe by machine, but ultimately, you know, not everything comes out the same uh, color as you would expect. Like, if you add like uh, red PVC, maybe they're not, maybe then they'll all be the same shade of red if they were all thrown in the factory at the same time, I guess. But then you've got you know, gradients to do, so that sort of thing has to be painted somehow, and presume, I presume that it would be done via an airbrush, whether it's by a person or by um, a machine or something. Someone or something has to then apply that. Unless, of course, there isn't any, in which case it will look, well, it will look like it hasn't been airbrushed. Sure, throw my light around because I want I want to make sure that I'm throwing that light around so that I can see the forms that I need to uh, paint my in betweens in for. Right. Really, really want to be sure that I'm doing this quite lightly. I want it to be very smooth. Right. May even have to go over it with the uh, um, like a mask brush that's on zero on the opposite sort of side so that I can get. You know, get it to be a little bit uh, less visible. Oops, other way. If I go back to my ambient occlusion, I can see that there is clearly an effect, right? So, and the ambient occlusion map is really helping me see what's already there and what do I need to change. With it on replace, I can just um, take away, or even like light areas as needed if I really had to. Um, so I just find that it's better to be on like replace if you're going to manually author stuff in there.
If I wanted to see the mask only as well, uh, I could just flick through uh, using Shift C. You might need to set this hotkey on your own though. Uh, it's a custom hotkey, so that's easy enough. So I can see what the uh, the shape of it actually is. It's, I think it's good to be able to flick through uh, these types of views so that you can see the effect of what you're painting and also what you're actually, you know, what your paint actually sort of looks like. You know, what does it actually cover? But at the end of the day, I suppose the view that matters is the one in Marmoset. You can get a little bit, um, shall we say, acrobatic uh, in substance. You may find that free rotation will help you out a lot more when you're painting um, and you need things to go a certain stroke, like a certain stroke direction, sorry. Um, over here, just painting in between those, taking away remember we want to go like mask first then you know your edits then adjustments okay. but ultimately you can do it the way that you see fit it's just that i find that that's the way uh that involves the least the least amount of like post processing and adjustments and such you know just uh basically the less faffing you know the better well, until you receive feedback, obviously. Sometimes though, um, the stroke minimum size can have an effect on uh, how, like, you might accidentally paint like this super thin uh, line, but it ultimately uh, doesn't do you any good uh, because it's like you just you, you can clearly see there's like this really really like um, obnoxious sort of line there that uh, seems to you know take a lot of shape and that can be pretty frustrating um i don't think there's really much you can do about it um other than look at the pen pressure settings or something but uh that you can't really f i can't f remember where exactly it is right now so we'll just uh cope with it and just correct it as it comes but uh, yeah, I'm just going to turn that past spacing down as well. Spacing um, is I found I find particularly important on Photoshop. It's pr uh, pretty much the same here, because when your spacing is uh, really quite uh, high, then you might not get the um, like the flow that you need. So you want to turn it down a bit but at the same time um, if your spacing is too low then it repeatedly uh, paints on and you might find that the uh, brush becomes way more visible way too quickly than you need it to right, so over here for instance um, as I'm letting go the uh, uh, the trail becomes smaller but the spacing is of course you know really quite tight so uh, it, re it just simply repeats and what you end up with is a very like the trail off becomes sort of very small and very um, hard edged and you don't really want that you know, it's all about just checking and defining I guess right. You see, even though like I'm painting quite lightly, you see how that, because it gets so small, um, 
it start it becomes really really obvious so if i go paint really small then paint really big you see how you can still sort of see that little line that is um not desirable um it would help that flow would have its pen pressure on as well that would probably be one reason why uh yes yes that's exactly why it's uh, looking a lot better now i mean it's still a bit um problematic sometimes so sometimes you want to just disable the uh the size of the uh uh brush it, look the pen pressure for the size of the brush right and just allow the actual flow pressure uh to uh change that and just you know just going over uh it instead really I mean, maybe a little less than that and that should get a much uh, smoother airbrushed look which you probably want more for your um, ambient occlusion if we go to the uh the actual you know material view and just shift that around and you see that it has like much more of a you know painted model feel right so when you look at you know the frills and the in-betweens of a given model you'll probably notice that there is sort of like a painted ambient occlusion on there in real life at least like you know you it depends on the figure of course but uh, and how expensive i guess it is And you might find that they're colored as well right so you know you might like to achieve like a particular look or it's like to simulate sort of bounce lighting or just for any bloody reason you know like object, when this material gets dark it turns purplish you know that kind of thing and because you know it's we're working with uh, games here we can we can essentially just do whatever we want you know as long as it uh well, I say looks good, but more sort of, you know, so long as there is an eye for it, um, it should all be fine. That's smooth. Give that some more area. In there. That. Looking at that. Not quite as dark like that. that way that way it actually does uh, like sort of shape something that's all ambient occlusion really is is just in you know uh, dark areas that get occluded so they basically create a bunch of shapes but I'm still painting diffuse information in there, right? So if I go to uh, base color, right, you can still see that there is that information. Go to uh, ambient occlusion, if I could do it without going around. And you know, yeah, there's information in there as well. Right? We're doing it at the same time. We don't want it to be too much. We just want it to be enough to, uh, you know, say that these areas are, you know, recessed. They're um, covered by other things, and that light does not need to travel here so much.
Okay. All about the softness of it. So the softer it looks like on here, the softer the material should feel in engine. We do have the other side to do as well because this is um it's modeled as two-sided um and much like with the uh the skirt before it that ha now that had a uh, a two-sided sort of material mask on it so that uh we could easily change uh the you know the inside now this one might not have that um, and the reason for it is because we don't want uh, that much of a visible uh, seam on these ends really I mean we can put it here like on say this edge right, going along but then it might not um, play too nicely with like smoothing groups and such um, it depends but uh, we'll have a look in a bit. But the most important thing right now is just to get definitely the outside should be looking best and then we'll work on the inside as it gets, you know, lo looked at uh, from uh, presumably upward angles and side angles. Still want it to be, you know, gradient like and all, but um, just not too uh, too strong. Which is a mistake I think I've made here, where it has gone a little stronger than necessary. That's most of those, I think. Uh, put them all back on and here. Yeah, like if we look over here, a lot of this seems to make sense. Some parts that are a little bit more aggressive than uh, necessary though. So we look over here, oops, wrong color. Drag that down a bit. As always, adjust. Of course, the uh, like the color that we've got on the uh, base color for this particular ma uh, map is obviously too uh, dark, so we'll be adjusting that. But first, you know, let's just make sure that the mask itself is correct. Back to isolated. Yeah. There. Okay. 
Okay. Alright. That's what we've got at the moment. Just need to need to just oops. A little bit more, see so smooth out a little more. Turn it down to about eight. I'm just gonna throw on just these last sort of bits just in between. Right, so where it doesn't form like a, a complete dip but still changes form, so like the way this changes and the way this changes, you know, it's like little hills. Got that. The uh, inside part will just be a separate layer, so we can concentrate purely on the outside, and then we can add some uh, changes to the inside, and we'll use some masking just to make sure that it's all going in the correct place. Oh, it's not going to be too crazy masking or like a fancy mask unless they've been uh, separated designers. It's just uh, some simple poly masking. All right. Darken that a little more. Not dark and brighten. Move what the uh, ambient occlusion was already there. All right. So now that we've got that, we'll say that this bit is okay. And we can do some like, you know, little adjustments just to see what we uh, think. Right? So let's go ahead and run roughness down to the bottom just to see. And we can see that these areas then become, you know, more highlighted. All right, back up about 95%. And then up to color, we can go over and change this to whichever it would be nice to then start taking some cues from the blue perhaps if we just take throw some uh like the surrounding sort of area on right so just like a sort of colder color perhaps but not too too much we only want like a little bit very small amount something like that perhaps upwards a bit into the blue or the purple Right, something like that. Now I can see that there's some gaps where the um, the mesh doesn't quite match up snugly to the uh, uh, the sort of band like geometry there. So we can just move that in Maya. That's not a problem. You know, just sort of post mesh correction. Um, provided it's small things, it's fine. You know, it's not like you're gonna get it. Like a floating object is not necessarily going to map accord like a hundred percent to another floating object. Now, if these two things were like attached as you know two things, two objects, 
you know, bonded together, then yes, of course, there would be no holes there. But that becomes problematic in terms of, um, you know, just the modeling and UVing and, of course, the rigging aspect as well. Right? It tends to be a lot easier if things are separate objects so that you can paint them separately. If um, these two, these frills here were combined with this, which is combined with this, then that becomes hard to rig going to be so much you know hiding and unhiding of um like individual polys and it's a lot harder to hide individual polys than it is individual objects right so if you can have it float there's no problem with that you know if um you know you have this arm here and this here these should probably be merged for instance that's not like that much of a problem you know but with something as uh, complex as this frill here you'd probably want it to be um a separate object so I go with that and we can also uh, brighten it up a bit if we just go to base color see what we're doing we only need a little bit of you know colored shadow there we don't need a lot the ambient occlusion map is going to be doing uh work for us well sorry the ambient occlusion edits that we're doing is going to be doing some work for us unlike with uh the blue dress where there was already decent enough ambient occlusion we're having to paint in our own information so that's why um you know we might not necessarily need that much uh diffuse going on in there but again, the engine is what tells the, uh, the story with that. So, yeah, okay. And then I guess finally, you can look at the ambient occlusion. Not go past it. But if we can change the uh, amount that's showing up over here, right? Oh, so that seems reasonable. So something like that seems uh, probably afford to take uh, the base color down further just on the um, acity. There, uh, just to an amount that seems okay. There we are. And I don't want to. Um, go like do uh like everything on one um object like because the way that like i don't want every like all of these objects to be on this one layer because you know you might be adjusting this on a kind of case by case basis so you know if you were to go and um all right okay i can't adjust anything because i've got to go and do this bit and then this bit um as well and then this bit you know you're gonna um make things harder like if you're just trying to keep it to one layer no need to do that you know just split the work as necessary that's what i think anyway okay and inflation might need brightening up turning down 0.43 seems okay there and then of course there's a roughness which I think is at 9.5 uh, seemed a good number now we can look at these maps so we can see yeah our in-betweens are definitely getting brighter than the outside but as we know you know as we know it's a white material so expecting highlights to appear uh, they won't appear that brightly or at least they shouldn't Okay. I'm gonna check that that's all thing. Yeah, this layer with this fill and AO, yep. Yeah. Go to uh, ambient occlusion. Right now this is on multiply, that's why it's changing so much. Just put that on normal, there we go. as well that. this 
play a bit more. Not that much, I guess. Okay. Pull it over here. I'm just going to try hiding it so I can see what the differences are. Yeah. The only thing that I think, or well, I can't even really tell there to be honest, is it does seem fine. Yeah, it's just maybe toning down. Um, this way a little bit just so that more of it is showing up at the front sometimes uh, substance will save that's fine I'd, like I definitely wanted to be doing that and be in a closure okay I'm just going to free up some of the uh, the map here just because it's getting a little bit darker in some places that it doesn't really need to be. Go down, a bit back. It's true here, it just needs a bit more. Oops, wrong way. Just need a little bit more. Alrighty then. Ah, so now when we look at the before and after, you see, right, before, but this is purely the ambient occlusion channel, you can see that um, there is a quite a difference, you know, so here's um, just the base amount that Marmoset gave us, put it on, and uh, we get a lot more variation in there. Yeah, the only criticism might be that it's a little dark, uh, but we'll see uh, it may be a case that the actual base color of the white needs to be buffed up i think that is uh, what is happening to some degree my instance here got a uh Roughness and color fire on there. The layer, which is, I think, the other ambient occlusion. The layer. Use the mouse to change the color uh, if the tablet pen gives you problems. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's about, uh, roughly speaking, an hour's worth of work. Uh, an hour's worth of work, even. So it's not um, horrendously bad, but it is kind of slow. Um, at the same time though, it's a bit quicker and more, um, shall we say, authored than a, like, going over and, like, baking six million different 
AO maps in Marmoset, waiting 30 minutes for each one because, of course, you want it to be in good quality. Um, and then trying to, like, merge them together and Photoshop them together. It's just, it's just a headache, right? Why do that when we can just paint it? And then you find that actually, you know, one hour's worth of work here is versus, say, you know, a complete time of maybe even five hours or six hours, right? Maybe. Probably a bit faster than that, maybe more like three. Um, counting render time, of course. So that's a good uh, analog there. And then we're going to call uh, the layer that we were working on over here. So instead of just AO edit, uh, we're going to add in, uh, like, say, shoulder frill or something like that. Right, so. And I'm typing slowly because my uh, keyboard is behind my graphics tablet. Um, this is mostly just because of the arrangement that I have. Um, if I wasn't streaming, for instance, I probably would be able to move my tablet a little bit more further to the right. Uh, but uh, for the purposes of this, uh, obviously the mic has to be here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yes, it, like, you can forgive my uh, somewhat slow typing speed for that. Now, next thing, so much like before, I'm just gonna copy this thing. Because most of this, most of the values here are going to be what we want. Um, oh yeah, it's Control D, isn't it? Okay, cool. Most of the values here are going to be what you want. Um, and we can also look at the uh, ID maps as well. Um, if we really wanted to filter it down to only certain areas uh, that wouldn't exactly be difficult we can encapsulate uh, this shoulder frill here we would very much like to um, maybe because the folder technically isn't open bit strange I can't seem to move the folder or the that's a new one I've never heard of not being able to move the folder so change that oh it might be because it's not base color no no it's actually not it is not playing nicely hmm Yeah, that's that's a new one. I've never heard of that. Uh, just make sure it's saved. Hmm. A little weird, I will admit. Uh, give me a second. I'm just going to restart Substance Painter. Maybe that's the reason why. Uh, shouldn't take very long. Because normally, uh, Substance shouldn't have any kind of issue with that. But um, clearly something's gone on where um, it's doing some strange behavior. But normally, yes, you can move your uh, for your uh, like layers around and put them in groups and everything. So that's just a little strange behavior for it. Yeah, so we're just loading the project back up. And we're just going to try putting it uh, in the folder that it should be going into. So, 
and try and drag it. Mm, it is not playing nicely today. Like I'm not even allowed to move any uh, layers around. It's very strange. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll just have to put up with it for now. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure why, for whatever reason, it's decided that I cannot uh, drag the folder in so it may be related to the other uh, case where I tried to drag the texture into the um, input and for whatever reason it didn't want to do it I'm, uh, admit, I'll admit I'm not entirely sure on that one normally that is the uh, like the correct behavior is that you can drag it around but uh, when I'm trying to move the file, it's sort of, it almost like it lets go of the mouse cursor. Um, a little strange. Can't even paste it in there. <laughs> All right, then that's a new one. All right then. Uh, have it your way, substance. All right, and so we've got our pasted uh, like map here. Well, texture paint layer. Unfortunately, we won't be able to um, filter it down to the other, um, or like you know, like a uh, paint layer. Um, because that's what I'm trying to do is to try and add my mask and then throw this into here, but it's not having it. I don't know why. I've never experienced that before. Okay, all right then. Um, okay. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and add the color selection to the layer itself instead and go to our uh, split view and we want to work on a different frill this time. So we've done this one already. We want to do, say, uh, these this apron. And so I'd go to my color selection, pick color, pick the apron. All right, so then therefore this is already masked to that and Paint layer here, close that, add on paint here. And if we go to mask, so we see that this mask controls this area. I just want to check that if I uh, paint on uh, information here, yeah, it's going to overwrite it. That's not what we want. Um, what we want is that. Um, the folder above it is then able to mask the uh, amount or multiply but uh, what we can do instead is um, get our color selection that's fine add paint move this up For whatever reason I can't move it up okay fine uh, add color selection select the apron and then no multiply on the uh, on that section. Yeah, yeah, and it does change things actually. I'm not sure why substance is having a go with that. Um, I have to actually Google it now. I can't drag the layers. Um, have a look. Uh, supposedly, according to Substance Forums, it is a bug fixed by restarting Windows. 
Uh, far from ideal. Correct. Yes, you're right. And for whatever reason, that is a bug. So, and this was from 31st of October 2018. So, I think they've had some good notice on this bug. But, unless it's like some kind of lock button that I've pressed or something. People aren't getting answered to this bug, I'm afraid. One point X. Um, it's going to try that, right? Who knows? No, apparently uh, it seems to be very much bug um, and supposedly is fixed by restarting windows. You can imagine how uh, great that feels if you're in the middle of uh, the stream for instance. You can, you can hardly restart windows here. Not sure why they programmed it that way, but there we go. If we could just put this back in. And bear in mind, that's not some recent issue. That is a um, an issue that's at least been posted about in 2018. So not, not pleased, not pleased. Anyway, so clearly we won't be able to mask it properly like for now, we'll just have to uh, deal with it uh, as we go, and then we'll just, and then when the stream's over, we'll restart the machine and then apply the color masks on properly. But for now, we'll just have to deal with it. So, we just want to paint in some uh, AO information over here. Now, we've already got all of these colors set up. Yep. It should just be a case of just painting the information on. Uh, turn the flow down and the opacity down as well. Of course the uh, pen pressure as well. Ah oh, yeah, it's really, really low. Okay. Throw on a little bit of, uh, yeah, and like, there's not a lot going on, um, so you don't necessarily want loads and loads of information, but just enough to be able to say something. Right? Just to say that, you know, something is behind something else, or that uh, it occludes something, you know, that's all it is really. Meant to be. Ayo. Yeah. 
just want the uh, that little bit of uh, done. It's like it's already pretty, uh, pretty much covered by most of this AO. We just want to buff some uh, parts of it to be even further. Just that there is more. Just trying to be careful not to accidentally uh, spill over into the frills over there. But we're going to do that on a separate layer anyway, so it's not the end of the world if we do. It just means that we're going to correct it later when we've got uh, time to, you know, restart Windows. Again, really not, uh, not fun uh, when there are bugs that tend to go unanswered uh, for long periods of time, but uh, that is just what happens. Again, I hope that... Uh, Adobe does actually like fix a lot of that. Not sure exactly how responsive Adobe is, but um, hopefully, hopefully it'll, they'll be able to provide some more support that I think that Substance do kind of need. I think we're getting a pretty good effect out of that actually because we're getting some level of like you know depth in there this is a result of the paint you know, and we're sort of simulating some extra you know folds just to say that they're a bit you know soft I hope You might want to do the same uh, for highlights as well. Like you wouldn't need to necessarily paint the AO um, unless you want to replace it with white. That might be a good idea, but you could uh, paint on, you know, a slightly lower roughness and maybe a brighter color and go over sort of the, uh, you know, the well, effectively the curves, I guess, uh, the model links where it, you know, comes out. Where the curves you know come out from the uh, surface I mean you could use a, a curvature map as well although uh, it could be a bit um, pixely sometimes it, it depends but ultimately you know if you, you could experiment with that and it might very well produce a good result
think. Yeah. And you said, geez, I don't really want to apply too much um, of the uh, AO because, of course, it sits on top of uh, the frills. So you really want for you know to communicate that the this like lip sits on top of the frills underneath it um, and the way that I'm doing that here is that I'm uh, painting on AO um, just over um, this edge and then I'm replace like erasing it from there and anyway, I haven't forgotten about the uh, inner area of those uh, shoulder frills we're just going to do it after like the outside sort of parts because I think the outside parts are just uh, uh, much more important right you want to get those right whereas the uh, inner parts probably not so uh, dramatic about hoping it's not too muddy and if we need to do any like like line defining things or something or like edge defining we can do it in another layer much like some of the hair we've done you know where or where um stuff is a bit tighter now this is this seems good it could just be a bit softer at the bottom though Look back at the oh, I was already in it. Cool. And this bit at the top here, I've got to make sure that I include some AO for that too. All go back to the main view. Now you can see that this area also um, needs to be moved outwards, but we've done that already in Marmoset. We don't need to worry too much. Um, what we do need to worry about is just making sure that there is AO information there. Perhaps. There you are. Just want to make sure it travels. Something like that. So we might want to just soften up just a little bit, just a little bit, even just soften.
Okay. Yeah, okay. Sounds okay. This little part here, which I think is as a result of another uh, layer somewhere that's affecting uh, the way that that's looking. I think it might be as a result of uh, something over in, a, in the... We'll just check the other part first. No, that one. Well, the more accurate it is, it is this one. Uh, so let's try and find it. So let's get there. So where is that? Ah, there's this thing here. Uh, look at the filter, uh, yeah, ambient occlusion, and the color here is just straight black. And this, the only issue is that this would affect. Uh, a lot of things, not just uh, the current um, this area, but it's going to affect this. So just going to be slightly careful about it. Something like that, I guess. Or well, maybe. Much? Bit, you know, because we're gonna we're gonna paint on a bunch of AO anyway, so it's not, you know, the end of the world. And over that part. Alright, so we're going to save that, and uh, perhaps it's worth uh, taking a look in Marmoset to see how it goes. Uh, as we know, or rather as I know, uh, Marmoset has a tendency to play a little bit rough when it's been left alone for a bit. And let's just see, hopefully it will, well, hopefully we'll see if we can actually load. Alright, okay, so we can move the model around just fine. That's probably a good sign, but we're on the, uh, the next part of this... Uh, Rand experiment where we go over and uh, export our textures out and we're going to try and uh, watch Marmoset hopefully reload them um, but it might lag a bit and I've played around with some settings some more um, and I'm hoping that this combination of settings is going to lead to a slightly smoother experience Hopefully it won't lag. Oh. Well, it did okay this time. All right, all right. Now, we've lost a bunch of AO information because of the fact that we've changed that, um, that layer uh, that was instantiated across. That's okay because, you know, this is it was only the, uh, the white part of the mesh and we're going to basically repaint a bunch in anyway you know so the only parts that it's got are some interesting issue up there apparently but we can paint that out hey there you go um 
but also the uh how do i put it let me just try moving the Right. Just wanted to see whether or not I could find that issue. Apparently, it's a normal issue, like normal map uh, projection issue. It could be, and that is understandable because it's um. When we look at the geometry over here, like that's where the geometry has been merged to uh, form the uh, two parts together. Right, so even though they're separate meshes on the actual low poly, they're together, right? So the, on the high poly, they're separate. On the low poly, they're together, right? If that makes sense. So finding uh, that issue just seems to be a weird sort of shading error. It may be a shadow issue. That's what it's looking like anyway. Uh, because the issue doesn't seem to show up in substance, so... Hopefully it's just a uh, shading issue and not anything too weird. But we will see. Still, ignore it for now and we'll see if we can fix it later. Now then, um, on to the next part. Next part. Let's do this um, shirt, actually. This might be uh, good to do. Now, this one... Do white base over there. Instances within that. Yep, there you are. That contains a whole bunch of information. Apparently, it also controls the... That area there, it shouldn't, but um, we can fix that later for now. Uh, go ahead and get a fill layer in here. Uh, in fact, we can just copy the uh, the one from the other uh, side. In this case, let's rename this to uh, Apron Frills. A O Edit. And make sure that we clearly copy get into the layer, just check where it is. Here. Paste. It should be pasting on top. Yep. Yep. Because it doesn't seem to paste inside folders. It will only paste it around. And then you have to put your uh, your your uh, layer in there yourself, which of course uh, we can't do right now bug so there's that let's go ahead delete that paint and add some new paint and again um, it's a case of just uh, painting on the, uh, the data now we may find that we need to refer to uh, this right, the second uh, UV and we can rotate you know, the light just to be able to see what's going on. You know, what's what the forms are like. We'll raise some of these opacities as well just so that we can see what we're doing. For now, yep, there you go, we're working. Just put that back down now. Just that we were on the uh, other um, like layer. I think we were on the... Uh, the the black mode or zero as opposed to um you know white or one now i'm painting mostly here with the uh normal map like helping me so most of the form here is uh being defined by the normal map and Having that there really helps me be able to see what exactly I'm um, well, painting. Right, or where am I supposed to put um, shades in or you know, where am I supposed to put the AO? That kind of thing. I'm using that as a bit of a guide uh, in order to uh, paint in this AO and uh, 
color and roughness and such. I don't want to, you know, make it too blobby or anything. At some point, I must uh, lower the size of the brush and increase the uh, you know, the hardness and actually draw in lines. Well, you know, you know kind of like lines. But I also want to make sure that I am painting, uh, you know, the actual sort of shape and the fact that it's being occluded by so much cloth In this case as well, it's looking like um, we're getting some problems where um, areas are not quite painting right. Ah, I know why, I know why, I know why. The reason why is because um, this bit is mirrored, right? And this bit is not. So this can result in some really, really weird play. Um, so you might find in your painting in your uh, ambient and whatnot that uh, because you've mirrored an element um, you see how that becomes so much more difficult so as I'm painting and it's matching over on this side it's not matching on the other side so that is a bit of a problem and it's difficult to resolve mm. Prevent this, of course, by, you know, not mirror anything at all, or, um, you know, which is like kind of, you know, it's like um, not really resolving the problem. Or what we can do, if we just backtrack a bit, I'm just going to backtrack to when we didn't paint on it, basically. And we might find that there's some uh, paint issues when, like, you know, using like substance, uh, like effects and stuff. It's just simply down to the fact that one side is mirrored and the other one is not. Um, so when you have like a pattern over it, you're going to get a seam. So this this is where we're going to try uh, doing some um, Maya work to try and. Uh, correct this a little bit. If I can just get Maya. Anyways, uh, so this is us in Maya right now. I want to open a file. Just bear with me one sec. Get that file. Got to browse for it. <laughs> yeah. Got to browse for the file. One second. Oh wait, yeah, I need to import the file, sorry. Yeah, because it's, uh, what I want to do is just import the uh, X that um, Substance is using. Real quick where it is actually pulling it from. Duration. 
Final link. Uh... Oh, all right, fine. We'll just have to pull the file in. Right, explore the mesh. Actually, that might make things easier. Put mesh, and then throw it into its file. Oh, it's being exported at the wrong time. Uh, it doesn't export in FBX. Our substance doesn't export in FBX. It's a little bit disheartening. Oh well, um, that's fine. About to open the. Uh, Should be this one. We have to be kind of careful with this. Um, so I'm going to save substance again and uh, and we're just going to look at um, the this is the file. Uh, this is the model for Sakia that I'm using for substance. So of course, there's still like um, issues in terms of like mesh alignments and stuff but that's not what we're interested in um that's all fine now what we want to do is that um the uv over here on this object so this uh, arm is mirrored this arm is obviously mirrored but is the, the original and then this whole piece here is not mirrored so when we go over to our uv and uh, just get that you'll see is that um for projection what we've done is that this uh, mesh has been um you know isolated but the thing is is that in order for um I'll take the symmetry off as well in order for us to be able to paint this correctly you know we have to be able to um use symmetry the only problem with this is that it might paint twice, but I guess this is worth, you know, trying. Because at the moment what it's doing is that when we're painting, and even with symmetry on, we're painting here, and then we're painting here. Um, but it, then it's not, apparently not painting over here. Um, so it's, it's just resulting in some problems. So it's... It's worth trying, right? Just to see if it will actually uh, work. So, what we the easiest uh, thing to do? Just click uh, move one, set your move to one, and that will move it, you know, from uh, you know one space exactly, right? So, uh, so like very easy to keep things aligned uh, that way. I'm just gonna save it. Control one. Get back here. My outliner, go here, cool. and then just select the whole mesh, and we're just going to go ahead and export it as an FBX. So let me just uh, go ahead and do that. Now we're just going to export it into the uh, the same directory that we're using for Substance Painter. You'll be able to see that right now, but you can just imagine where it's going, and we're just going to call it something like I don't know. Um, Sakuya Substance Painter Mesh or something. Okay. Export that there. Great. You might get a complaint that like some maps don't work or something. Uh, depending on how you UV'd it and how uh, you've textured it. But um, presuming it, that you know what you're doing, it should be fine. Now, save Substance because mesh changing in substance can either make or break the whole project and it takes a while for it to uh you know change anyway you don't you do not want to end up in a situation where you have um gone over and committed a change uh, to your mesh and then save that change and then realize that actually some parts don't line up 
and all of that paint work in you know maybe it's that area or the whole mesh now is completely wasted right so it's one of the easiest and fastest ways to wreck the whole project right so we just have to be very very careful and very thorough we want to have it so that preserve stroke positions on meshes on um, generally speaking if it is off it might completely ignore everything and think that it's all uh, foreign and then just root, like you know throw all your work out you know like so you have to be very very careful Foro. and this is a process that takes a while we've loaded it in but of course it's uh, what it's going to do is just load up our textures again presumably um, attempt to align the strokes if it doesn't work that's okay you know we can always go back to our previous save and when you do go to save don't save over the original file save a new instance because otherwise you know if it's you didn't notice that there was a change and um, now the file doesn't quite work the same and you won't have any way of backtracking to your previous save so you know it's something you need to be super super careful of you can easily ruin like you know your whole project or your whole you know hours of work just by um incorrectly uh well not even that for substance incorrectly uh, assigning the textures back onto the model from the looks of things it looks like it's worked taking a good look around All right. Okay. Seems okay. All right. So what we do, we save a new one. All right. Make sure that's definitely, definitely saved. Wrong way. Right, okay. And now we try again um, with the uh, cloth over there. Right. It might take a while to like reload um, the materials and all of that stuff. You know, hopefully it won't be too bad. And we'll see whether or not this worked. Right, so we've got um it's so that when we paint over here it's going to symmetry and then it's going to hopefully paint on both sides here as well hopefully it won't like duplicate madly but we'll we'll see um it's always a little difficult when it's when you're working with um symmetry stuff and it may be a case where actually you either avoid painting on that part which is you know not particularly great or you um have to reproject that particular part and re-unwrap it so that both uh, parts have because they're attached have got their own space um it may be a compromise like that that we have to make we will see so open frills AO edit go over to paint and we'll just see what happens obviously you might find that it's still loading stuff in and go over to the uh, send it to camera. We got symmetry on, but you can see that it's clearly uh, doing issues with uh, you know when we're painting on. You know the the seam is exaggerated. So if we just go ahead and increase our stroke capacity a bit more, if we turn symmetry off. Um, it doesn't have that much of an issue. I mean, it's still there, but it's not anywhere near as profound. Right. But of course, as you see, that the issue is still over there. It could just be that we had uh, panicked and that it was actually just a tangent issue. So again, that's why we save over a new, uh, sorry, a different file, like a new file, rather than, um, you know, saving over the old one. So... Not that way. I'm gonna go over and open the old one and just check uh, the brush stroke. It could just be that.
in which case that whole demo was just you know uh completely unnecessary but you know hopefully we learned something from it all right oops not on there I'm just gonna give it a little bit of time sometimes uh substance can take a while to load it up just gotta give it a little bit we're gonna switch marmoset over on the window as well Not as well right i mean we haven't even previewed in marmoset yet but um well not fully but, yeah all right so this is back on symmetry and the other side is no longer mapped on and our alignment is on tender app let's put it on camera and we've got a flow that's pretty big all right we're on the right layer so let's just see what happens oops the correct thing ah okay yeah we had uh, perhaps over overreacted I mean, it's still seem, it does still have a seam on the other side though, but that could be down to um, like some other, like AO or something um, in there. When, however, when, what to bear in mind on the uh, Marmoset render is that some of this is gonna be hidden away by these frills here. Um, so we kind of get away with it. But if these frills weren't here, um, what would you do about it? What would you uh, try and do to avoid this? Well, um, the lesson here, I think, is that this area does not need to be mirrored. In fact, it shouldn't be mirrored because it's attached to something that is not mirrored. So I think what I'll do is that I'll, uh, I may have to um, like take this part and like unmirror this so that it's on its own you know geometry the only problem with that is that the mesh unwrap at the moment does not really allow for this right now um and of course there's too much put in for us to go over and um just simply you know attempt to like fix not without like a whole bunch of stuff uh to change so perhaps we can take the L on this one and accept that the frills are currently doing a, d a good job of preventing uh, the visibility of that error, right? So, you know, we're quite lucky basically that the frills are there. Um, if they weren't there though, yeah, it would might be a much bigger issue, but that's okay. We'll learn for next time. And next time, um, the thing to bear in mind is as you're modeling, Right. If you've attached a uh, part to um, what is essentially the same part, right? So this sleeve, which belongs to this shirt, they are both essentially the same object. Then they should both, like all of this, should have its own UV space, or you, you know, uh, mirror it down the middle. But obviously, you can't really mirror it when it's you know like down the middle like this when there's um, a geometry change here. So yeah. Um, so that's a lesson learned, but you know we kind of get we kind of get away with it a little bit. Now, um, as you can see, right, most of the damage being done is around here. Right? So, but when you look at it from further away, it's not that much of an issue. It's actually not too bad. Right? If you were to like really, really like zoom in and inspect and. You know look and apparently there's a hole there we can fix that later um you know if you were really like gonna zoom in around like su like super hard then yeah of course you're gonna see that there's a you know a gap there where we haven't quite covered it or whatever but you know that's fine so in terms of dealing with it in this way then right 
you know, to pretend that we do have uh, a certain amount of, like, like, let's say a deadline to actually reach, right? You know, you want this project to be fixed eventually. You know, you don't exactly have the time to go over and, you know, fix every single little issue. Like, obviously, the first uh, method is prevention. So, prevent the issue from happening in the first place. And then the second thing, uh, I guess, is um, resolve mistakes according to priority and damage. So, in this case, right, you know, this is not, because there's so much uh, that helps to cover it, it's not as big of an issue as you might think. But if those frills weren't there, it may it may very well demand that the whole thing get re uh, you know redone. You know you might very well have to do that, and that is unfortunately just uh, the way that that goes. So, but thankfully we we don't quite have to. I think it would be fine. Uh, dear, yeah, yeah. Turn that flow down. It does mean that we have to be slightly more careful in terms of our uh, painting though. And some areas of the um, AO generator are gonna have to be masked off for this. But aside from that, it's not too bad. Make sure you're playing with that light and uh, can see exactly where you're painting and try to uh, correct the stuff around there might be worth also flicking the uh, view. Yeah, so you see that area there, um, that is being caused by that AO map um, over here. It's okay, okay. Right. So, so, if we just we hide this for a sec and then look at this thing I think. and look over here and what's this ah yeah this is another um, shading AO layer okay right, so that's so these three are gonna be uh, issues when it comes to you know trying to fix that like mismatch so one of the uh, things that we can do about this uh, should be pretty simple. Just add a uh, white mask on. We want a white mask on this because we don't need to um, go overhead and redefine a whole bunch of stuff here. We just want to, you know, mask off the bit that's problematic. So, oops. Might as well add a paint layer on it. Add black and turn your flow and stroke opacity up. Just erase that bit over here. Because we have symmetry on, it is also painting on the other side. At least it would be. Uh, I think so. Yeah, there you go. Anyways, there's that. All right, so we'll go ahead and look at the next layer. All right, so this is, uh, oh, no, that's not that one, this one. All right. So this is our like sort of uh, colored shadowy kind of area. We're just going to add another paint layer. This one is like a a uh, it's like a defining um, mask. So we're just going to like remove the parts that were being uh, affected around here-ish. I think. Just head back to normal mode. You may also uh, need some kind of base information. It's looking like it does. Over in instance. 
Y instance. Yeah, that bit there. So if we can make a layer that defines it like that. Okay, yeah. So we're just going to duplicate this and leave that one. Take this, uh, remove the mask. So remove that. Remove the ambient occlusion, remove the gradient, keep it like that. And then if we flick back to base color, you see that we've got that uh, all set up like that again. Okay. That way we've, uh, we're trying to sort of prevent the, uh, like basically stuff forming over here that might cause a seam. all okay you know as good as we can get it basically you know it's not there's a bit there that's a bit weird you were fine Okay. All right. All right. Let's end it like that and see what happens. All right. It's not quite uh, amazing, but it is going to be enough, I think, to prevent, you know, too many weird issues. Uh, but yeah, it is a little unfortunate. Alright, so let me just get back to the. Uh, no, it's this one. No, no. Alright, so we're going to just really like finish off uh, some parts of this uh, like AO painting on the shirt here. Okay. So we've come across a number of like fun issues today, um, as we should, you know, it's all like, because, you know, you don't, one thing you don't really get, I guess, on like tutorials is like problem solving. So when things go wrong, um, you know, it can be difficult to work out what to do. And I suppose it's one hopeful, uh, thing I've got with this stream is that maybe it will, you know, present problems to you that you might encounter in future and hopefully be able to resolve maybe as a result but uh you know such is hopeful but at the same time you know um i remember when i think it was hazardous that made a uh, a post about this kind of thing you know why you would want to watch say Hazardous make, you know, 3D model uh, on Twitch or something. I think it's Twitch that he usually streams on. And, you know, that was one of the stronger arguments, uh, I think, uh, that was presented, you know, that you don't really see um, things like, uh, like how, how problems are resolved, 
you know, in tutorials, right? Because they tend to show you everything as like this package that's complete. And, you know, like uh, when you do come across such a problem and then you're scratching your head and wondering why, why on earth can't you resolve it and all that. And, you know, it, it might help to have uh, an example where, you know, you where someone actually does f find that obscure, weird problem that you come across. You know? And then it's not, you know, it's not just you. It is just uh, like it's an issue someone's had around and actually, you know, being able to document a solution to it to some degree. I mean, who knows, right? We're just going to quickly paint on some information not going to be a whole lot because it's going to be something that we're just going to we're going to have to finish off uh, at a later point in time be able to make it a little bit neater as well but for now uh, this is okay this is fine I'm gonna check the other side as well yeah, okay that's all right Just gonna paint in between there, and for this bit here, like that's underneath this collar, it's just way easier to just paint on the actual uh, UV. Right there, we've got symmetry on as well, so it's all fine. But you know, and then right, don't tell me that you're gonna throw a light underneath this area here. You know, you you're not going to. But you still don't want, right? Like, let's say a light does angle its way into this like crevice here. Are you really gonna render that full bright? Probably not. <laughs> I don't think you will. <laughs> yeah. And we're just gonna finish this bit off here. Like, it's not super neat. We can need it up later. All right, so let's see how that's currently looking in our ambient occlusion. Hmm. Not too bad. We can obviously neaten that up a lot more. Yeah, but that will be for another time. All right, so let's uh, take this then and this and this. And what is left still to do? We've got this, we've got the back side of this, and we've got the back side of this, and the frills on, on here as well. Although, in fairness, there is, you know, quite a bit of work being done by the AO map itself. So uh, let's save it first and we'll do our final sort of send off towards uh, Marmoset. And I'm hoping, uh, couldn't see my mouse, yep, Marmoset's running pretty good uh, today actually. So 
let's a moment of truth and export this out. One, two, three, export. All right, and if we go ahead and open my set, hopefully it will be good. We can see that there was a drastic difference actually, and it's also running really, really fast. So that's a good sign. Um, yep. And what I've got here as well is that I've got a like a, a slightly different lighting setup, uh, like an alternative lighting setup. If I just quickly throw this into a group, perhaps. Lighting A, perhaps. Well, let's just move over to uh, oh, oh, I'm a moron. <laughs> it's uh, this one. This one. Sorry, <laughs> forget my own controls. Anyways, so this is Mama set in full, um, and I'm just gonna move this lighting area up. Is that me. Oh, all right, let's just move that down there. Uh, further down. Not like that. Oh, well, that can be a little bit strange with groups sometimes, so it'll kind of throw you off a little bit. But after, when it, after it's all resolved, so fine. And sky, so low sky. Right, so there's this, this setup. Right, we turn it off and then we turn sky solo on. And then we're just gonna throw the brightness on here. Now, obviously, this like pure like skylight rendering is obviously not uh, ideal, like for anything, like purely, purely by like skylight, it would be, you know not ideal because it doesn't do anything like um, uh, anisotropic I don't think I don't think it will do that but what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, just you know be able to rotate the map around so that I can see what it's doing um, unfortunately it doesn't really seem to do very much uh, it just like you know does some shadowing but that's other than, like besides that it doesn't really do anything um, so I don't think that particularly works for me uh, but what I can do now that I've grouped it all up, do it like this, and you see how it's just so much more different, right? Like so much better when I've uh, grouped the lights together and I can just rotate them around like this. You can really see the difference in the way that uh, lights. That's uh, pretty good. Just undo. That back there we go and I think that that's working pretty well right you get some actual like sort of airbrushing in there like I think that needs more work over there but um you know you get the gradient um coming out like obviously we're gonna tuck that in there more you know obviously but um like if we just ignore that little bit there for now you can see that like you know there's you're getting some dark up and then out into light there so looks more and more sort of like a I guess a figurine and that works pretty well for me and yeah we're just turning the light around yeah, it seems pretty good if we uh, go over and start revealing the rest of the model uh, that, I think that's everything. Check that the eye shield is in there. Yes, it is. All right, cool. So, and then we'd go ahead and rotate our lights around again. Wait. And, and yeah, I think that uh, works pretty well. Looking at the clothing, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's 
It's not bad. Apologies for the abrupt like frame change there. It's just the um like it reached the end of the like rotation. But yeah. Alright, cool. So that um I can call that some kind of success. Obviously, as I said before, we have a seam over here, but it's not the end of the world. You know, I don't think we're gonna you know, if, if you've got an actual like seam issue, uh, the best thing to do is just to not show it <laughs> in your portfolio renders. So uh, I think we can call that part of this sort of experiment in terms of, uh, you know, painting the uh, white cloth around here, around here, you know, a pretty good success. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. So we're just going to save that and uh, with that, that's what we've got time for today. We went slightly over just because I really wanted to see, you know, just to get something in Marmoset and see it working. So thank you so much for attending or viewing, um, whether you're live or um, viewing in post. So if you have any questions, of course, as always, you should leave them in the chat or in the comments. Um, you know, not just like at the end or anything, but, you know, definitely during as well. I'm definitely free to answer any questions uh, until next time where we will continue doing some more um you know cloth painting um but it depends how much progress we make from now until next time uh where i'll be trying to do a little bit more uh of this as well so then uh until next time uh farewell thank you so much for coming goodbye